Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're continuing with our Trivia Let's Talk lore series. We ended last episode with Liu Bei on the run, but as we know, Sun Quan has given strict orders to chase down and kill Liu Bei, even if his own sister gets in the way. Liu Bei's party, fully aware that their escape will be noticed soon, traveled non-stop throughout the night, as they only rested two times to give their horse some rest. Before sunrise on the next day, they had already made it near Chai Sang, but right behind them, the first group of Chen Wu and Pan Zhang were finally catching up. Zhao Yun volunteers to be the rear guard to give Liu Bei some time to escape ahead, but up ahead was another group sealing off their escape, as Zhou Yu, who was stationed in Chai Sang this whole time, have sent Xu Sheng and Ding Feng to guard the main roads just in case Liu Bei ever tried to escape through this way. Now surrounded, Liu Bei falls into despair as it seems this marriage was destined to end poorly from the start. Zhao Yun, however, remembers that Zhuge Liang had given him a third sealed secret strategy to open when they were in danger, so now would be that time. So Zhao Yun opens the third strategy and immediately shows it to Liu Bei. Liu Bei then rides up to Lady Sun and tells her, My wife, now my life is in pearl. I want to be completely honest with you. When Zhou Yu and Sun Quan first proposed this marriage to me, it was actually a ploy by them to lure me to Wu in order to regain control of the Jin province. Originally, their plan was to kill me before our wedding, but luckily, through the protection of you and your mother Lady Wu, we were able to have our wedding. And now the news of Cao Cao's invasion has reached Sun Quan, he wants to stop me from going back in order to pick up the scraps after Cao Cao and my forces fight. Right now, his forces are right behind us, and in front of us are Zhou Yu's forces. I'm about to die, so I just wanted to be clear with you, as I'm in love with you. Hearing this, Lady Sun becomes enraged at her own brother as she rides out with weapons drawn. Facing Xu Sheng and Ding Feng from Zhou Yu's camp, she yells out, Have you two rebelled against my brother? The two generals, seeing that it's their lord's sister, sheath their weapon and explains that Admiral Zhou Yu has asked them to wait here to prevent Liu Bei from leaving Wu. Lady Sun continues, Then Zhou Yu is a traitor too, as we are simply returning to the Jin province together. My mother and brother already knows this, so let us path. If you continue to use your men to block the road, then I will have to assume that you are trying to rob us of our valuables. Xu Sheng and Ding Feng, unable to go against Lady Sun, quickly withdraws and let Liu Bei's party through. Then, Chen Wu and Pan Zhang reached Xu Sheng and Ding Feng, and they explained that Sun Quan has in fact ordered them to chase Liu Bei's party down, so they regroup and continue to give chase. Seeing that the chase has resumed, Lady Sun tells Liu Bei to go ahead first, as she and Zhao Yun and 200 guards remained to deal with the four generals giving chase. The four generals sees Lady Sun and all of them dismounts without their weapons, as they explain that they are only here to invite Lady Sun and Liu Bei back to Nanxu. Lady Sun scolds back, Who are you to tell me what to do? I am already married to Liu Bei, so even if my brother comes himself, he would have no right to tell me what to do. Do you guys really want to fight me to bring us back? The four of them looked sheepishly at each other, and all thought to themselves, Lord Sun Quan and Lady Wu both love Lady Sun, so if they happen to hurt her in a fight, it would be their head that would be on the chopping block. So they back off, as Lady Sun and Zhao Yun regroups with Liu Bei, as they continue forward trying to get through the Wu territory to reach the Jin province quickly. In a few hours, however, Zhou Tai and Jiang Qing's men also arrive armed with Sun Quan's sword, with strict orders to bring back Liu Bei, no matter the cost. So the six generals, with more than 3,000 men, once again gives chase. In order to make up for lost time, they split up with Xu Sheng and Ding Feng going back to Zhou Yu's camp in Chai Sang to get speedboats to chase on the water route, while Zhou Tai leads the other three generals to give chase on horseback. Meanwhile, Liu Bei's forces have arrived at the border of Wu and the Jin province, but they do not have any ships to ferry them across to the north bank where it would be safer for them. So as they look for ferries, the Wu forces arrive to cut off their escape on land. When things looked desperate, a row of more than 20 battleships arrived out of the blue with Zhuge Liang holding his fan, leading the way. It turns out, since Zhuge Liang gave Zhao Yun the three letters, 
Zhuge Liang predicted that Liu Bei would be making his return sometime around New Year's, so he had been waiting here the whole time to pick up Liu Bei. So Liu Bei's forces board the ship as they sail away from Zhou Tai's forces. However, a much larger naval force appeared to their east. It turns out when Xu Sheng and Ding Feng reported the situation back to Zhou Yu, Zhou Yu, who was still nursing his injury, decided to send out the whole Wu navy with him leading the way to cut off Liu Bei's escape as he faulted himself with his whole wedding mess. Zhou Geliang, seeing that Zhou Yu means business here, as Huang Gai and Han Dang flanked Zhou Yu's forces, he quickly ordered his ship to beeline for the north bank as they abandoned their ship so that they can travel on horseback as they had no chance on the water against Zhou Yu. Not willing to let Liu Bei escape so simply, Zhou Yu ordered his men to dock as he commanded his navy to disembark and give chase on foot as well. But since their force was the navy, only the officers had horses, so they could not close the distance on Liu Bei's force, as Zhuge Liang has came prepared with horses of their own. But despite this disadvantage, Zhou Yu pushed his men forward on full march to not let Liu Bei and Zhuge Liang off easily. But Zhou Yu, blinded by his hatred of these two men, overchased and soon entered into the Jin province territory. As Zhuge Liang had already had messengers race ahead on swift horses, Guan Yu had soon shown up with a larger force to welcome Liu Bei back. Then from the north, Huang Zhong and Wei Yan also launched a charge at Zhou Yu's men, who now have enemy on all sides as they are pushed back to the Yangtze River. Zhou Yu quickly orders a full retreat as they try to pull back to the ships behind them. But most of their men could not break free, and Wu's navy took heavy losses on land. When Zhou Yu finally got back on board, he could hear Liu Bei's forces yelling out, Zhou Lang Miao Ji An Tian Xia, Pei Le Fu Ren Yu Zhe Bing. This means Zhou Yu, with all his smart plans, lost men, and even threw in a wife as well. Furious, Zhou Yu orders his men to disembark and fight back. But Huang Gai and Han Dang held back Zhou Yu, who was clearly out of his mind, as they ordered the ships to quickly sail back to the south bank. Zhou Yu sat on the deck of his ship and looked up into the heavens. Shame overwhelmed him, as it was his plan in the first place to try to use Lady Sun as bait, but at the end, he lost over half of his navy in this fight, and Lady Sun is now with Liu Bei as they arrive safely back to the Jin province. He cries out as he does not know how he will ever be able to face Sun Quan again. Unfortunately, his poison arrow wound needs him to remain calm. So as he got emotional again, his wound reopened and Zhou Yu let out another cry as he passes out again. When these developments reach back to Sun Quan, Sun Quan orders Chen Pu to quickly rally their men as he wanted to sail down to the Jin province to fight Liu Bei. But Zhang Zhao begs his lord to reconsider, as if they fight now, the only person that it will benefit will be Cao Cao, as if they really force Liu Bei's hand, Liu Bei could even join Cao Cao, then we will be doomed. Sun Quan then asks, what should they do? Zhang Zhao suggests, perhaps we could send someone to meet Cao Cao to see if we could join forces to destroy Liu Bei. Hua Xin offers to go, so Sun Quan sends him off to see if he can negotiate a deal with Cao Cao. When Hua Xin arrives, Cao Cao strategist Cheng Yu whispers to Cao Cao that Hua Xin has clearly come here to try to work us to join Sun Quan's side as Sun Quan wants to attack Liu Bei and reclaim the Jin province. But a better plan for us is to make Sun Quan and Liu Bei go all out at each other. This way, we can just sit back and wait till they both become weak and we can finally get our revenge for our losses at Chibi. Cao Cao agrees and asks Chen Yu what the plan exactly should be. Cheng Yu says, all we need to do here is use the emperor's mandate to appoint Zhou Yu as the new administrator of Nanjun in the Jin province and Chen Pu as the new administrator of Xiakou in the Jin province. Liu Bei can't openly go against the emperor's will here, but he also can't let the Wu generals become administrators of these key commanderies in his province. Wu will take this mandate as our approval for their attack, so these two sides would then go all out at each other's throat. We simply have to watch the show, then sweep down to clean up the mess afterward. So Cao Cao meets Hua Xin and tells him about these appointments as he ordered these administrator seals to be sent down to Zhou Yu and Chen Pu immediately. When the seals get back to Zhou Yu, Zhou Yu reports back to Sun Quan and is delighted as this was the green light they needed to attack Liu Bei. But Lu Su asked if he could try the diplomatic approach one more time. 
Sun Quan agrees and allows Lu Su to visit Liu Bei one more time to ask for the Jin province peacefully. When Lu Su arrives, Zhuge Liang tells Liu Bei to see him and just cry. After a barrage of tears by Liu Bei, Lu Su doesn't know what to say, and at this time, Zhuge Liang comes into the room to check on Liu Bei. Lu Su asks Zhuge Liang, why is Liu Bei so sad? Zhuge Liang says, my lord feels ashamed as he has borrowed the Jin province. He wants to quickly take Shu so he can return the Jin province to his brother-in-law Sun Quan, but the owner of Shu right now is Liu Zhang, who is also Liu Bei's relative. So my lord feels like he's stuck between a rock and a hard place as both sides are now his family. If it's possible, please tell your lord Sun Quan to give us just a little bit more time and not fall for Cao Cao's treacherous trap for us to fight each other here. So Lu Su returns to Chai Song to tell Zhou Yu this first, and then wants to depart to Nan Xu to tell Sun Quan. Zhou Yu, however, tells him to not report this back to Sun Quan, and just make a quick trip back to Liu Bei, as he now has a new plan. Lu Su asks what Zhou Yu's new plan is, and Zhou Yu explains, Tell Liu Bei that if he feels uncomfortable to fight his relative Liu Zhang, then allow me to fight on his behalf and conquer the Shu lands for him, and we'll gift it to Liu Bei as Lady Sun's dowry. Then Liu Bei can give us back the Jin province. Lu Su is surprised and warns Zhou Yu that the Shu lands is far and asks him why waste our men on conquering land for Liu Bei. Zhou Yu asks and says, I have no intention to fight for Liu Bei. I only want to fool Liu Bei to let his guard down. Then. As we march across his land to go to Shu, we can stop by Jinzhou and ask for some supplies. When the gate opens, we'll rush in and finish Liu Bei off without the trouble of sieging. So Lu Su heads back to meet Liu Bei and tell him that Zhou Yu volunteers to march to Shu to take the land for Liu Bei as Lady Sun's dowry. Hearing this, Zhuge Liang quickly agrees and says thanks, and tells Lu Su to please invite Zhou Yu to come to pick up a resupply as they feel obligated to give some support to Zhou Yu's heroic act. Lu Su leaves and Liu Bei, a bit confused, asks Zhuge Liang what this is all about. Zhuge Liang replies, this is another one of Zhou Yu's ploys. He wants to catch us off guard as he marches his army through our land. But unfortunately for him, his time is up. If he dares to come, we'll make sure he never returns. On Zhou Yu's side, Zhou Yu quickly rallied over 50,000 men as he led generals Gan Ning Xu Sheng, Ding Feng, Ling Tong, and Lu Meng to sell to Jing Zhou. As they enter the Jin province, they were greeted by Mi Zhu, who tells Zhou Yu that Liu Bei is waiting outside of the gates of Jin Zhou with fresh supplies and food to welcome their party. Zhou Yu gives his thank and tells Mi Zhu to return to Liu Bei to let them know that they will arrive shortly. Zhou Yu then docked his ship and only took 3,000 men along with Gan Ning, Xu Sheng, and Ding Feng and walked toward the city. But as they approached the city, they could not spot a soul, as no one was there to welcome them. What was waiting for them was Zhao Yun and his archers on the city wall, as they told Zhou Yu to back off, as they know exactly why they came. At the same time, scouts reported back that Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, Huang Zhong, and Wei Yan's forces are now closing in on them from all four sides, as sounds of horses and men crescendoed around them. Zhou Yu, seeing that his plan has once again been foiled by Zhuge Liang's wits, let out another angry cry as his wound once again reopened. His men quickly grabbed Zhou Yu and retreated back to their ships. Zhou Yu, resting in bed, decides that perhaps the best plan for them right now is to just sail to Shu for real, as they could not take on Liu Bei's forces here. But then reports got back saying that Liu Feng and Guan Ping has already used the Jin province navy to seal off the way to the west. Just as Zhou Yu was trying to think of their next step, a messenger arrived with a letter from Zhuge Liang for Zhou Yu. The letter states that Zhuge Liang has missed Zhou Yu's company ever since their time together at Chai Sang before the Battle of Chibi. And he says, I heard you intend to take Shu for us, but I'm going to have to stop you here, as Liu Zhang might be weak, but Shu has many natural barriers that's just as strong as wolves. So this trip will be a foolish one for you, and a dangerous one for you. So listen to me, dear friend, and turn back, as if you insist on continuing, then Cao Cao will surely return south, as he remember the losses he suffered at Chibi. None of us want to see that day. So please take this as a warning to the heart. Zhou Yu read the letter, 
let out a long sigh as he asked for a pen and paper, and Zhou Yu writes a final letter to Sun Quan. He then gathered up all his generals next to him as he told them, It is not that I don't want to serve our Lord, but I feel that the time heaven has given me is now up. Please help me to continue to support our Lord and Wu after my passing. With that said, Zhou Yu passes out, only to wake up in a short while. Zhou Yu then looked up to the heavens and asked, Ji sheng yu, he sheng liang, meaning, if you have given birth to Zhou Yu, then why have you allowed Zhuge Liang to also be born? Zhou Yu went on repeating this line many times until he finally succumbed to his wound, dying at age 36. And with Zhou Yu's death, our tribute lore series trilogy has finally concluded. Our story encompassed over 23 chapters of the Romance of the Three Kingdom novel and tells the tales surrounding the pivotal battle of tribute that helped shape the formations of the Three Kingdom. Although we can surely continue our story, I felt Zhou Yu's death here would be a nice ending point, as his battle of wits with Zhuge Liang were some of the highlights of the story. I hope you have enjoyed this lore series. Going forward, I'm going to be doing a few short single episode lore series, starting with one covering Cao Cao's family members, as I want to wait for another long series once CA announced the content of the next DLC, which they said will come before the end of the year. So in the meantime, please enjoy the historical episode that will be on tomorrow and other contents on my channel. As always, I would appreciate it if you can subscribe to my channel to help support it. And if you have any suggestions or requests, simply comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!